I'm a Silicon Valley native, actually. I grew up here when it was still called Santa Clara Valley. Uh -huh. um, and had a front row seat to the early uh, you know, home computer environment. I wouldn't even call it the PC movement, right? Where you had trash 80s and Vic 20s and you know, mm -hmm. Sinclair 4K machines, et cetera. Um, and before that, even the hobbyists, the Steve Jobs and the, and the Steve Wozniaks uh, of the world. And it was similar in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. right? Where you couldn't actually do anything with these things, but it was participatory mm -hmm. um, right. in that the right. technology was rude enough and open enough that lots of different people could do stuff. Right. Now, paradoxically, that also gave me a front row seat to when all that crashed in kind of 84, 85, 86, right? Which occurred alongside the introduction of the IBM PC. Mm -hmm. Right, which you you know, mm -hmm. most of the world looks at that as if that was you know the nascent founding, and and you know mm -hmm. that's where the PC revolution started. Mm -hmm. But ironically, that was where a wave broke and crashed as oh. well. Right, there were lots of competing technologies and lots of competing ideas that suddenly were ossified, and it was like this is the standard and this is how it goes. Do you see? I think how much riskier it was to invest in stuff back then. Well, it was extraordinarily, uh, it was extraordinarily risky, and many of the early, you know, um, uh, you know, again, people forget Intel is obviously challenged today, but like, you know, it was roughly the time where Intel lost the memory market to the Japanese. That was the real loss there, and everybody was convinced that yeah. the, Fujitsu was going to dominate the multiprocessor in in the future. Um, didn't work out quite that way, but um, you know, it was much, much riskier. Very similar, huge. Um, interest and and within the community that I grew up in, a huge bubble that was created, um, but then it crashed on a standardization. Is there is there anything out there that you see in crypto that's similar to that standardization moment where people suddenly say, "Aha, this is actually the useful variant." I mean, it could be Ethereum that would effectively make Vitaly Buterin the the king of the world. Um, well, there seems to be there's the store of value you know, use case, which is Bitcoin and a few others, that is as old, you know, a problem as anything. Um, and gold served a, a purpose there. Um, there's payments um, and there's, you know, a few different competing and that's farther behind, but that is a real, you know, benefit because we pay, there's a lot of friction in payments in our society. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's it's really it feels incredibly expensive um, to you know, to have a visa transaction, um, and then there's the smart contracts. You know the technology. What technology will things run on? And there's you know growing competition there. Um, it's so different. Th like I, I have a hard time dismissing the store of value. Um, so I think there's a reason Bitcoin was um, the first thing that was done and has been safe, I guess, a safe bet. Um, and I think it's too early. And there's a lot of um, lessons in the tech world of what ends up winning, right? It's like, where do the developers go? And, you know, you're, a lot of people are making bets on where to put their attention and time. Um, you know, who adopts, who, who gets market adoption. Um, and it's so early uh, there. So, um, and then later applications, I mean, it still feels like it's really early. Um, but as I said, I think because these things are liquid and price, um, price changes is comprehensible to everyone in the world and it changes, potentially changes their behavior of where they're going to put time and what they're going to change, I have a view that it's going to accelerate the market, the transfer of knowledge to what is actually winning formulas and will lead to you know, other you know, magnificent results that say Ethereum had. Ethereum is probably the most spectacular single investment um, that I've seen in my life. And I didn't get a whole lot of it <laughs> in my portfolio. Had I actually just started a year earlier you know, in, in this universe, I, I, I could have had a much greater return. But I'm just saying, like an asset class, this is a platform shift, right? That will grow with time and it's hard to understand. Um, and it's not that I don't have to understand it, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm learning what the properties are, and what are the potential ramifications, 
And then what are the effects of it, right, as it changes other things? And what is the effect of blockchain? But I'm looking at it as the context of this is just one sector, one tech breakthrough that's changing one area, and it's really early. And the same could be said, I said autonomous driving, you know, in autos, and the same could be said of genomics in healthcare, which is, you know, actually the most incredible, right? I mean, knowing your personal genome and being treated about that is just mind-boggling that it can be delivered to you for less than 100 bucks, you know, like a negligible amount of money. Like, that's incredible. But the healthcare system's not ready to do that. And so my pattern recognition is that we're just on legacy platforms. We're waiting, and I think the culture is ready to change. And so let's just use crypto as, it's in finance, yes, it's, it is in and of itself, but it's also representative and the, the most accessible of all the new technology platforms for consumers. And it's happening and it's accessible around the world at the same time. I think Asians are, like culture, are taking to it much better or faster than, than we are in the West. But I'm, you know, I'm ready for you know, big changes in security tokens, for instance. But I don't need to be precise. You know? and with the duration, you don't need to be as precise as you do in you know, managing low vol public market uh, funds. I do think this is the big trend. I'm looking for the, something that is bigger than this. And maybe I'll be wrong, maybe it's gonna take longer for these shifts to happen. But as I put in the time, I just think this is a representative of a bigger um, perception change around the world. And now I think the risk is not doing. Like the corporate risk is not you know, adopting and getting closer to this, like take, take blockchain. That's my perception. And regulatory, as much as China has stopped it temporarily, the risk is you, you ban it and then you, your human capital you know, goes and builds systems in other places, other, other jurisdictions.